Welcome to episode 11 of The Mental Dietitian. This episode is with my good friend, Jaden Vu. Jaden is an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur. He's owned many different businesses. He invests in stocks, crypto, real estate, NFTs. He's a multimillionaire in his 20s. I worked with him uh, probably about three years ago. Great dude. We talk about money. We talk about money, how to think about money, how to get more money. Talk about money. The thing that a lot of people feel very anxious to even talk about, we talk about it because he's qualified to talk about it. This one's a really good episode. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you get some value from it. We both go on little rants at times, but there's it's just chock full of value. So hopefully you get value from it. And I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say about this one. Welcome, Jaden. How are you? I'm good, Aaron. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to drop some bombs. Got some bombs. Yeah, man. I wanted to have you on for a while. I was thinking before I had you on here how long I've known you. It's almost been four years since we met at a corporate gig that we were both working at. We were in phone sales together. We we're both trying to make a lot of money. And we've that's, a, that's what the podcast is about. The podcast today is about money. I want to talk about money. You've achieved a lot of financial success at quite a young age. And I really wanted to pick your brain about that because I think a lot really? of people, oh yeah, you know, get out of here, man. I'm comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Like most people are not comfortable though. That's my point. Like a lot of people, the whole, like most of society, when it comes to talking about money and finances, they kind of, their shoulders go up. They get, even me sometimes, especially in the past, money is one of those things. It's like, you love it when you've got it and you hate it when you don't have it. Hmm. It's a strange relationship that a lot of people have with it. And I still battle with my relationship with it. And you've called me out on it a bunch of times. And I appreciate having people like you around. But the first thing that I really, really want to talk about with you is identity. And you've been broke. You've told me you've been really, really broke. And now you've been as what you call comfortable. Um, but how does how did you go and change your identity from being broke to being where you are now like because i think a lot of people get stuck in their identity of i don't have enough money or even when they start making a bit of money say they start making five grand a month then they up it to mm -hmm. seven they up it to 10 and they up it to 15 they might get stuck at a certain point so first question like how old were you when you were at your like in your adult life where you were just broke like busted broke like how old were you how many times is probably a better question because I've been broke many times. Uh, but uh, I would say probably because there has been multiple strides where, you know, I've seen some highs, seen a really bad low, kind of like a stock market, what's going on right now, right? A lot of people have seen the highs and the, and the you know, tail end of 2021. And now people are just literally suffering from the huge lows that's happening. Um, so it's kind of like that for me. It was a roller coaster. There was no one specific moment. So I'd rather share what was the most devastating uh, moment, you know, when it became broken, when things really came crashing down. And that had to be the moment that, you know, around the time that we were not cl as close friends, but we were friends. Um, and we had that chat at Starbucks. My business completely just crashed down. Um, and I really didn't have anywhere to go. I had to sell my watch. And well, how long ago was that? Um, three... That was 2019. Yeah, 2019. Yeah, what? so that was... Not that far off. Um, so 2019, and that was probably the most devastating moment. And it's not because I haven't been broke before or I haven't seen money, you know, just vanish out of my bank account or my back against the wall. It was just because I had such a huge high, you know. Um, like you were saying earlier, we worked together. I was doing that just for fun. Was it a means to an end? No, it was just for fun. It was pretty much my um, Italy spending money, right? Um, I believe I went to Italy or Japan. I can't remember at the time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I was spending money. But when you see money that you actually depend on and rely on come literally to a halt or a zero, it's devastating, especially um, you've built this lifestyle for yourself and you have certain standards and expectations that, you know, you live by. Um, so that was devastating because, you know, when you come to a point where you're debating whether or not to sell a watch that, you know, you bought to reward yourself as a memoir or as like kind of like a, it's kind of like a, like a, the, a thing you look at, something that's really significant to you to kind of re cherish. Um, so when you come to that point, you're begging your friends and your family, even people that you're really close to, um, 
and the thought didn't occur to you that you're not close to them, but you need money. It's not, it's not easy, man. Um, so that'll be the, the most devastating moment. And what I realized, because it's not my first rodeo of losing money and, you know, I'm an entrepreneur um, and most great entrepreneurs never look at anything as a failure. They just look at it as another event to do things more intelligently. Um, and uh, you already kind of know my, you know, comeback and it was literally borrowing money. I knew what I was good at, double down on it and paid, uh, you know, um, that individual back. And um, now I'm where I'm at. And at the end of the day, you can either give in to what it is that's happening to you when it's money related, or you can make it, you know, better. And I chose to make it better because I'm just like, it's another one of those. And as much as I want everything to be a hockey stick, <laughs> it's not a hockey stick. Yeah, man. I remember that. That was uh, some, some dark days for you for sure. I remember that conversation in the Starbucks. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Not a, not a fun memory, but it builds character. We'll look back on it one day and you're probably grateful for it. Like you look back and be like, thank God that happened to me like that. Thank you. It, it takes a while. Cause obviously all those moments sting and they hurt a lot, but you mm-hmm. wouldn't be where you are today. If it wasn't for that moment, I wanted to go back a bit further with you though. I wanted to go back for maybe when you were like, like when you were just starting out, like really setting on identity, like, what I really want to want you to try to explain sometimes it's hard is how did you go from maybe having like a broke identity of like making three, four grand a month, two, three, four grand a month at a regular job. Cause I know that you were a, uh, I think you were a, a line cook and then you were a chef. And then I know that you probably weren't making massive amounts of money. Then how did you go from that to getting into sales and like what shifted your mentality? Was there an event that happened? Was there something that happened with your family? Was it to do with, I'm sick of living the life that I'm living? Like try to go back to that point and spend time with 16, 17, 18, 19 year old Jaden, however old he was and try to figure out how he switched his identity and try and put it into words if you can. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. You know, taking a trip down memory lane. Um, so, you know, um, as your audience is listening to whoever is listening, maybe, you know, you are working a nine to five or your goal is to climb the corporate ladder or you aspire to be something within a business. Um, that was me, right. Um, just like you said, there are, and I was a line cook. Uh, My goal is to be the next Gordon Ramsay, you know, uh, open up a really successful restaurant, earn some Michelin stars, which is like the epitome of being a chef that you get rewarded for a restaurant. So that was the goal. Um, where it took a detour was you realize at the time I was working in the fine dining industry. So there's different levels of like, you know, what kind of restaurants and cooking you want to do. Fine dining being the very top. Um, and, uh, as you know, with fine dining, why a lot of people kind of go into that route is because they want to learn, right? Usually fine dining have way better chefs that come from Europe or like they're just really uh, famous in terms of what it is that they do. So the trade-off at the time was you go learn from these people. Um, And um, the other slide side of it is you don't get paid as much, right? Um, So for me, it wasn't that the money. But then you get to a certain point where you don't grow anymore, you don't learn anymore, and then it really becomes about the money. Um, And the most devastating, you know, moments, as there was many, was me having literally a panic attack because I didn't know how to pay my rent. Um, And I love brands. Like, I love buying nice clothes. Uh, and I was literally that saying that most people are today in this society. I hope none of, you know, I hope no one bashes on me when I say this is a lot of people like to buy things that they can't really afford to impress people that they don't really care about. Right. I was like that. I would love to buy the nice brands and stuff like that to kind of make myself feel good. But at the end of the day, I know I'm not that successful. So it's kind of like the facade. Um, and then I realized I couldn't afford that. And there'll be times where I did buy that, but then I'm, I want to, literally text my landlord. Hey, look, I might be late on rent for the next two weeks. Uh, You know, things has happened, but in reality it's because I bought this really expensive jean or this really expensive jacket. That moment made me shift it and realize that I should never not have to worry about a bank account. I should not have to worry about a price tag. I should be able to enjoy life. I think life was made for us to be able to work hard and really enjoy all of its pleasures and all of its opportunities that it offers us. 
But when you have to struggle between buying nice things and paying rent, I mean, that's not that's not life. That's slavery. That's entrapment. Um, so, you know, when I broke it down, just to give everybody an idea, when I transitioned to sales, it's literally just because I realized I'm getting paid $100 a day. It's called a daily wage for 16 hours a day on my feet, chopping vegetables, flipping burgers, flipping, you know, pans and walks and stuff. When you break it down, that's less than minimum wage. Sure, I was young. I was young, Jaden. I was like, you know, 18, 19. And my dreams are more important than making money at that age. But at some point, you need to have money to do things. And um, I don't think I ever shared this with you that I would love to share with your audience. Um, the most embarrassing moment I've ever had um, was there was this, um, you know, person that was dating back then, you know, just very early in the stages. Um, and we've exhausted all the free stuff that we could do. And there was this one moment that uh, she was asking me, um, you know, can we do this or that? Can we go to a nice restaurant? And before I texted back or said yes or no, I had to look at my bank account and crunch some numbers to see if I can afford rent and get some food to myself um, and really just any other necessities. And after doing some math, I realized I couldn't. And I said, no, unfortunately I can't, but let's go to a park. Let's, you know, let's have an evening stroll. And I've never seen a person ghost me so fast. Um, and then I realized that was the most heartbreaking, embarrassing moment because I got, you know, I, someone left me, someone that I thought things were going very well because of money. And I want to, I didn't want to feel like that again. So I jumped to sales, uh, by accident. I had someone that was working in the industry. Uh, I believe I told you this there are but it's kind of like the Wolf of Wall Street moment. You've watched Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street, right? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so, you know, I had this person that was in the industry and then literally that specific scene with Leonardo DiCaprio, Jonah Hill sitting in the cafe, you know, Jonah Hill is all raspy, nerdy looking, and you got Leonardo DiCaprio's character looking all spiffy and, you know, looks like he's expensive. He's successful. And then if you remember that scene, literally he just quits his job and then goes for Leonardo DiCaprio. That was it for me. I saw someone that, um, you know, I had, you know, uh, contact with in the industry and then his social media started posting nice stuff, a new toy um, and all the stuff that I wanted. And I was like, hey, man, what are you doing? Tells me he's doing this and that. And I was just like, sign me up. So I quit my job. I hang up my towel. Um, and what that mindset shift was to answer your question. Why did young Jaden, who wanted to be the next Gordon Ramsay or the next, you know, uh, successful restaurateur, the next, next chef, give all that up after all those years of experience and, you know, busting my ass and taking orders every day for the last many years and jump ship to go into sales, which he'd never done. It's because, you know, I didn't know what it was at the time, but financial freedom. And, you know, what was more important to me at the time? Was it to make money to enjoy life or suffer more years until I finally see the money? And, you know, when I was caught into the whole nice car he had, the nice suits he had on social media, I'm like, if this dude left it and couldn't do it, why can't I? And I deserve this piece. So it was literally me maturing at that point and going like, screw this chef life. I don't want to work paycheck to paycheck my life anymore. I think I deserve making good money. And I want to be able to buy nice things and not have to worry about the price tag. So I jump ship. Hmm. Just thinking about that story and that girl that ghosted you. Well, she uh, she's not the right one anyway. <laughs> of course. I mean, young love, you know, they last, yeah. they don't last, but it is what it is. Right? But it hurt right. you at the time. You might look on it back on it now and be like, oh, what a silly girl, like. What is, but like at the time, it makes you feel inadequate because a lot of men pride themselves on wanting to provide. It's like almost a biological thing. Like, I want to provide, I want to be the one that provides safety in the relationship. Sometimes that can go too far, but it's it's a natural instinct within all of us, especially men. We want to provide, we want to be that guy. And a lot of men look up to people that are really financially successful and they think, well, that's it. But I mean, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on money doesn't make you happy? What are your thoughts on that quote? Would you say that after you made a certain amount of money per year, did you get exponentially happier the more money you made? Or was there a kind of a limit where you're like, okay, it's not like if I made an extra couple of hundred grand that I'd be happier. Does it just provide more peace? Like what's your thought on that quote? My first instant response, um, it's true. Money makes you happier. 
But when you really take a look at the root of it, there's parameters, you know, surrounding that and the way you look at it, the, the way you set up the parameters, meaning in, in the saying, I can't remember who said it specifically, who coined the term is, and you kind of brought it up earlier as well, is not having money makes you sad. When you have money, it makes you happy. I, I'm butchering whatever the saying is, yeah, but yeah. you know, the more you have doesn't make you happy. But being able to have some so you can do the things you want is really important. So for those that say, you know, having more money doesn't make you happier, that's just because they've never had that much money. And yeah. I don't mean to say that in a very arrogant way or anything and take it as you will, is that having more money gives you more opportunities. You have more opportunities, life gets more simpler. So as opposed to choosing between an apple and a lemon, why don't you have both? Why can't you have both, right? Mm -hmm. And more money gives you that, you know, not financial power, but also that mindset power. Because when people have more money, it empowers them mentally to be able to do things that they never thought they can do. Because if you go to a guy right now on the street or a lady on the street, um, and they're just an average Joe, and you just, you know, randomly strike a conversation, this is like, what if I told you in the next two years, you'd be a millionaire? They'll laugh, they'll shrug it off or say that's impossible. But in reality, that person that who's shrugging it off has that ability. It's just, it's got to start with the mind first and also how they value money. So going back to it, um, you know, do I, do I think money makes you happier the more you make? Of course, to a certain extent. Like mm -hmm. Where I come from now is if I add another zero to my name, it doesn't make me happier. Can I retire today? Yes. Do I choose? Do I want to? No, I choose not to. And that's because I'm just getting started not from a financial perspective, but more from a contribution perspective is I want to leave behind a legacy. I want to leave behind something that people remember Jaden Vu by, not because he was, you know, so well off, but what he's done for people. So, you know, that's why I do what it is I do right now. And, you know, um, my goal is not to wake up to make another million dollars, $2 million. My goal is to be able to provide for my partner, to be able to help on my family when they need it um, and really enjoy life, you know, do things that I wouldn't be able to do at 60, like surfing in Hawaii or something, you know, or going to Dubai and doing all these crazy motor, uh, you know, events, which I can't do at 60 because you get too old, you know, your body, yeah. your body can't handle it. Um, so that's where I'm coming from to a certain extent. Yes. But you can only say that when you actually have money to be able to actually exhaust all the opportunities that you wish you had. And once you've exhausted those opportunities, yeah, making more money doesn't make you happy. Yeah, I think that money can make you happy, but it doesn't necessarily bring you joy. Joy and happiness are different or, or fulfillment. It's not, like, it's not like if you add another, another zero to your bank account, you'd feel more fulfilled. I think feeling fulfilled can come from what money can give you. Money can give you time. And if you have time, you could maybe spend it with your kids or with your mom or whatever. And that makes you feel fulfilled. But if you didn't have the money, you couldn't do those things. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. And I, I love that. It's like, well, money doesn't make you happy. It's like, well, how do you know? Like, you how do you actually, how, how do most people know? We don't know. Most people don't know. Um, it's just, a, uh, we, it's like we live in a society that looks at people that make a lot of money and sometimes paints this negative thing over them. Like, there's all these negative things about money. I've heard them my entire life. It's like, oh, money doesn't make you happy. Save for a rainy day. Like a penny saved is a penny earned. A penny saved is not a penny earned. Penny, penny saved is just a penny. It's not earning anything. Like there's all these strange things to do with money. And they're usually painted in a way that is painted in scarcity. And there's a lot of fear around it. And I think it's because realistically, people aren't taught about money at all. I had to teach myself about it. My mom and dad didn't have massive amounts of money growing up. Uh, it, was, it caused arguments in our family. And I believe that it ultimately caused the end of my mom and dad's relationship due to years and years of struggle with money. Now, there's obviously other factors as well, but the number one reason for divorce is financial stress. So, I mean, I wanted to go back to you like, the average Joe, right? You said if you went up to somebody on the street, and you're like, hey, you're going to be a millionaire in two years and they would laugh and say that's ridiculous. What is the difference between that person, in your opinion, and maybe somebody like you or somebody like me that is like, okay, yeah, I could, I could actually do that. And how does somebody that would laugh at it and think it's ridiculous, how can they change their mindset 
to maybe some be somebody that would be like, you know what, I can do that. Before I answer that question, I want to push back and ask you a question, actually, because I wanted to actually hear your viewpoint. That would be nice for your audience to kind of hear your viewpoint on this. Yeah, as of well. course. Um, what are your thoughts on making more money equals happiness? I think it, I think you would get to a certain point that I have not got to yet. I haven't got to the point where I can be like, okay, I have all the money that I need. Am I happier? Um, I think there's a lot of things that need to people need to like deal with with their relationship with money. I have a very strange relationship with money where it makes me feel very unsafe if I don't have any, like very unsafe. And I think it comes from being a kid and not feeling ever safe around money. So a lot of my drive comes from a feeling of wanting to be safe. And sometimes no matter how much money I make, I still have that feeling, which goes to show that maybe it's not a logical thing. It's maybe a trauma, traumatic experience that I had dealt with when I was a kid. And maybe I have to do some kind of therapy to get over that. Because if you're scared all the time, Ryan Sohant would say in his book, scared money doesn't make money. Mm -hmm. It's true. Like if you're scared all the time and you're approaching money with this scarcity mindset, which I have done my entire life, don't get me wrong. It's got me to a certain point. I went from making $3,000 in my sales job to 7,000 to 10,000. The most money I've ever made in a month was about 30 grand. I made 30 grand in a month. And my mind was like, holy shit. And it, 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 it helped a lot. It helped me believe that I could um, do more and achieve more in my life, but it still didn't get rid of that same feeling. Like the, I wasn't exponentially happier. In fact, it almost made me feel like I had more to lose. And what that did to me is it does it to a lot of people is they have this governor on them, especially finances, like um, I make 10 grand a month. So if they make 20, all of a sudden, they will literally self-sabotage themselves back to 10. So what, what I need to work on, I think everybody needs to work on is like, that's the question I kind of asked you is how do you break past that? And I think it's an identity thing. I think it's like, oh, I'm only worth this much per month financially. Or I'm only worth being in this kind of relationship with this kind of person, or I'm only worth being this lean. Like some people get really lean and really healthy. And then all of a sudden their governor brings them back down and they're kind of skinny fat again. It's like the, have you read The Slight Edge? You ever read that book? Haven't heard of it. Very similar book to The Compound Effect, but basically has this graph where it's like this. And it's like a wave like that. He said, a lot of people hit rock bottom here, right? They hit a certain point. And they start doing actions that get them, start them going up this way. And then they reach this peak again. And, and then all of a sudden they're back down here again. They're like, how did that happen? And like, how did that happen? How did I like lose all this weight, see my abs again, save all this money, have all this money in my bank account, and now I'm broke again or now I'm fat again? And it's because their identity is still rooted in that person that was at the bottom. And they did all this work to escape that person, but then all of a sudden they start feeling good again. It's like they relapse. That's why the, the people that are most susceptible to relapsing who are addicts are people that have been like sober for two years or one year because everything's going great it's like that high you mentioned before like you're like so high and all of a sudden it all falls apart you're like holy shit yeah man long, long and short of it is that money provides you peace i think and it gives you peace of mind but happiness comes from doing things that like nourishes your soul it comes from doing things that like genuinely make you happy. It could be volunteering at a soup kitchen. It could be spending time with your kids. It could be walking your dogs. It could be traveling. It could be all kinds of stuff, but none of you can't do any of that shit if you're spending all your time making money. So that's my perspective on it. I think it's an amazing tool. And I think that we haven't been taught how to get more of that tool. And that's why I wanted to talk to you today to try and like get to the nitty gritty and be like, how can somebody that is really struggling with money, has a weird relationship with money that's listening to this, how can they maybe get a nugget of some sort or something from our conversation that will be like, oh, interesting. That's why, that's why I want to have a conversation with you. 
Yeah, no, and you brought up some great points, um, you know, that your audience didn't catch. It's it's really that governor that you were mentioning, it's all self-imposed, right? Um, and there's a lot of variables that, you know, give you this self-imposed governor, your upbringing, your parents, the way you were treated around money. Because um, literally, if you were to walk up to someone and ask them how much you make, people get skittish, people get nervous. They don't talk about that. You ask me how much I make, I'll be happy to tell you how much I make because I have a different relationship with money. I don't say how much I make to, you know, be boast about it or, you know, make myself feel more superior. It's just, I'm open with it. And the more open you are with it, the more it's going to welcome you. The more closed off to you, it's going to close you off, right? Kind of like, Think about it. If you don't like talking about it and you're sensitive around it, why would money want to reward you if you don't want to invite it into your life, you know, mm -hmm. on an open perspective? So you're closed off, money will close you off. If you're open, money will open up to you. It's, it's kind of like it. having like a, a secret girlfriend that you don't even talk about. Like, what's her name? Doesn't matter, man. It's like, why don't you talk about it? Do you not, do you not love her? No, I, I don't know. Like, it's kind of weird. Like, how much money do you make? Oh, uh, 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 uh. Like yeah. they get weird about it. I tell people about it. And some people have told me, well, you're not supposed to tell me how much money you make. I made about 200 grand last year, which is cool. It was, yeah. it was the first time I made that. I was like, this is cool. Awesome. But it's amazing how much, when you start making that money, how much more you can spend. And you're like, man, I 200 grand is not a lot of money at all. Like it's, it's really not. And then somebody might be listening to that and be like, you fucking asshole. I made 40 uh, grand last yeah, year. Really. <laughs> hey, I used, I used to make 40 grand too. And I still had a great life. And um, yeah, man, like people struggle with it. It's a, it's a like 50% like of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. They don't need to. But the problem is, is like six, this systemic problem with education. Like there's a systemic problem with like, education on finances like for example i'm a finance man i sell vehicles i get people approved with banks i look at numbers all day most people have not a clue how interest rate works not a clue no idea they don't have a clue how taxes work like not even like the not even like a kindergarten level like not a clue and that obviously if you're not educated about something then how can you ever become proficient at it it's like I, I practice jujitsu. If I never go on the mat and never train and I go on a competition, I'm not going to do very well. Problem is with finances, your whole life is a competition, basically. So you'd go into this life. Like I remember hearing people talk about it when I used to listen to a lot of podcasts. I still do, but it's like, what is the purpose of an education? Like, what is the purpose of finishing high school? A lot of people are to get a good education. It's like, okay, well, what's the purpose of getting a good education? Well, the purpose of getting a good education is so I can go get into a really good university. Okay. And what is the point of getting to a good university? Well, so I can get a good degree. Okay. What is the point of getting a good degree? So I can get a good job. Okay. What is the point of getting a good job? So I can make a lot of money. Okay. Wait a second. Why don't we just skip all that fucking bullshit? and learn how to make money when you're 15, 16, 13, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Why don't we teach people about how to make money and the people that want to be doctors and lawyers because we need them. People that want to do like the really educated stuff, we need those people. Like we can't, not everybody can be an entrepreneur, but it should be taught so the people that do want to do those things can do those things. But the problem is, is we have this industrial age, education system that it was taught how to make factory workers back in the 1800s and it hasn't really changed much now the factories are these upright buildings with a bunch of a bunch of computers and a bunch of cubicles we've worked in them it's literally like a a human chicken farm you're muted by the way i don't know if you're aware of that oh, i'm aware i'm aware all right but yeah like how how does one start educating themselves I can't answer that question, but how would you recommend? Actually, let's let's make it, let's get more granular. If somebody really wanted to learn and change their mindset about money, what is maybe you can't think of one exact book, but what are maybe three books that you could be like, you know what? If somebody wanted to change their mindset on money or maybe change their mindset on finances, I would recommend these two or three books. 
before I do, you want to hear a fun joke when it comes to what you went on a rant for um, school education? You want to hear a funny joke? It's probably not funny because it, it is probably, it's probably funny, but not funny. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So anyone listening, you, you know, literally just uh, I'm going to hype it up. It's a, it's a funny joke, well, depending on how you look at it. So <laughs> listen up. Yeah, okay? I'm only going to tell this joke once. Um, so I don't know if you're aware there are, and I kept this a secret for, for some time, but I actually have an MBA. No, I'm serious. I have an MBA. In what? I have a massive bank account. <laughs> so stupid it's like a dad joke but it's good it's funny right yeah you, well, that's, that's you never went to university did you no i never did i never even finished high school yeah i got expelled from two high schools yeah so anyway i just want to throw that joke in there for fun <laughs> for any of those that that you know might have a quick laugh here get a little comic relief um <laughs> but anyways diving back you know diving into it two books I'd recommend for anyone that wants to better their financial education or mindset. Um, one, my all-time favorite, um, The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. Yeah. That's a great book. Why you should pick this book up. Um, it really gets you to understand what makes people go from zero to 10 or how the successful people really have that mindset to get where they are. So there'll be references with like how Bill Gates got to where he is. Um, Elon Musk got to where he is or any successful people you might uh, get inspired by or look up to. Um, but it kind of breaks down, not from like a financial perspective, but their mindset with finances, which is completely two different things. Right. So that'll be one. Um, second one, I would also get someone to um, read Atomic Habits. Um, yeah, Atomic Habits. A book. Is a, yeah, it's a fantastic book. Um, it's not directly geared towards uh, finances, but it really kind of helps you build these atomic habits uh, where it helps you better yourself every single day in small ways that compounds every single day. Um, and these are, you know, really at the end of the day, half the battle is your mindset. If you can imagine it, if you can believe in it, if you can have faith in it, the rest takes care of itself. Um, so that's what I would uh, recommend. Um, so look at my bookshelf right now, a third book. Oh, all time favorite. I can't believe I missed it. How to think and grow rich. Yeah. I thought um, you were going to say that. Yeah. So yeah. that all time favorite, I'm staring at my bookshelf right now. Um, but all time favorite. And, uh, it's, uh, it's a very fun and almost like, um, dry kind of read. Like it might not be for everyone. It's an acquired taste when it comes to reading it, but if you really truly want to change your life, uh, when it comes to looking at money in more of a positive way um, and getting yourself to love money more and even love yourself more as an individual, it's a great book to start. Yeah, I would agree. I've read all of those books. And if I could speak to the 10X rule, it's funny. I was like, I was going to ask you that question. I already knew which books you were going to answer. I knew that you were going to say 10X rule. And I knew that you were going to say think and grow rich. I didn't know you were going to say atomic habits. 10x rule, in my opinion, gives you the mindset. It, 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 it exposes you to how lazy and how average your work ethic is. That's what it did for me. I was like, holy shit, I could do so much more. I could do so much more that I'm not doing. Atomic Habits, I'll give you a quote from Atomic Habits that really blew my mind. They did a study on people wanting to quit smoking. And they said there's two types of people that want to quit smoking. The first person is gets offered a cigarette and they're like, no, thanks. I'm trying to quit. The second person gets offered a cigarette and they say, no, thank you. I'm not a smoker. The first person's identity is still rooted that they're a smoker. No, I'm trying to quit. I'm a smoker that is trying to quit. The second person's identity is no, thank you. I'm not a smoker. So what does a non-smoker do? They don't smoke. What does a healthy person do? A healthy person doesn't smoke. So it's that identity is like, okay, am I a healthy person or am I on a diet? Healthy people don't go on diets. Unhealthy people go on diets. It's all rooted in your identity. Number three, think and grow rich. If you don't get the title, don't read the book because it's just, it talks about think and grow rich. It doesn't talk about, it's not necessarily think and grow rich financially. That's one part of it, but think and grow rich in all areas of your life. Another book that I would add personally that is not really about finance, but kind of is, it's a beautiful little story, is The Go-Giver 
It teaches people how to live in abundance versus scarcity. And it teaches people the five laws of, I think they're called five laws of receptivity or no, no, the five, five laws of something. And I can't remember. One of the laws is the laws of receptivity, which is the law of receiving. A lot of people are very good at giving, but they're not very good when it's their turn to receive. And a lot of people can work very, very hard, but when they start actually getting the benefits of them working really, really hard, they self-sabotage it because they don't, they think that there's that saying that it's better to give, it's better to uh, give than it is to receive. Well, it's utterly insane to try and give and not receive because if you're doing all this work in a business, for example, then all of a sudden you start receiving the rewards of it and you don't think you deserve it because your identity is still rooted in being broke, then you'll fuck the whole thing up. So that would be to, to build upon what Jaden said and to maybe add one more book that I think would really help. Who are some really influential thought leaders that people should follow or people or YouTubers that people should, should follow to start their financial education or start learning about stocks or crypto and things like that, that make it fun and make it easy. So when it comes to that specifically, I personally don't follow people like that. So number one, um, you can follow Jaden Vu. He's a pretty cool guy. Um, he kind of <laughs> educates you on that. <laughs> um, but on a serious note, um, when it comes to stocks and crypto like that, I don't vouch for a lot of people um, just because I haven't gotten the time to actually really know these people. Most of the people I'm around, they don't have a course or they don't have a social media, you know, educating people. They're just mm -hmm. like shadow millionaires right and um i'm going to touch down a little bit uh here but i want to pause for a moment and say um there are people out there who are very successful that i call shadow you know millionaires and billionaires and those people i respect more um just because when you're really good at something you don't really have to sell yourself or really have to go out there to pitch yourself your value and your expertise will come um, and especially for the financial, you know, um, education part of it and not, you know, everything I saying is not financial advice, take it as you will. Um, but for those, most of the people out there that educate you on stocks and crypto, whether they're good or not, that's, that's awesome. But, uh, like you understand how large my portfolio is and how smart I am with stocks. I don't need to be selling people on courses and stuff like that, nor do I need to make money off of that. But when it comes to something else, sure. So um, I can't recommend anyone, um, but if it's more of a perspective to like, you know, understand money better, or you want to, you know, you're into the entrepreneurial route, um, or whatever the case may be, the two people that I would vouch for, um, which I don't vouch a lot, probably one would be Tom Bilyeu. Um, yeah. So, you know, check out Tom Bilyeu, uh, T-O-M-B-I-L-Y-E-U. Um, so, He's a great one. And if you're into the entrepreneurial space, you like to grow, you like to be better as a human being. He's definitely a, you know, awesome person. Um, and Arvin shares the same love for this individual. Um, and the second person I'll recommend um, that I love following, and uh, a lot of people don't really follow her, is Marie Forleo. Yeah. Um, so she's cool. She's very personable. And she's had a hard life. If you actually get to know her story, she would actually uplift you. Um, so those two people I recommend, but when it comes to stocks and crypto, I don't really recommend anyone. Um, I just know most of the people out there don't even come close to the people I work with. So uh, it's that's true. just me being honest. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Um, there's, a two, there's only two dudes that I actually follow on YouTube that don't really give financial advice. They just kind of educate you on the current circumstances. And that's Graham Stephan and this guy, Andre Jick. Those two guys are very, and if, I don't think they sell anything. I really don't think they sell anything at all. Mm -hmm. I think they just provide like when, when the Evergrande thing was happening in China, one of them, they both made videos about it. And I was like, this is very interesting. And I got educated in a fun, entertaining way. And a lot of millennials, like a lot of people like to be entertained. So if you can be entertained and learn at the same time, that's, that's awesome. But you got to be very careful because a lot of people out there are trying to sell you shit when they're doing this because they're very funny or they've got a very good character or things like that. When in reality, what they're selling might be making them rich versus more than what they're talking about. 
And that happens all the time. Like I've heard the stories, people renting Lamborghinis and renting private jets, posting pictures of some course, making so much money that they can now get a Lamborghini and a private jet. It's like a sneaker oil salesman, but the modern day sneaker oil salesman. But yeah, like just in my opinion, and Jaden could probably share this, just start learning about it. So like, like, how does money work? Like, how do I make more money? And a bunch of stuff will come up, but be very careful of, spending a bunch of money on gimmicky courses because realistically making a lot of money takes a long time. It took me a long time to start making money in my sales career. It took me seven years to get to where I am right now. And I feel like I'm, I'm really just getting started. I got a long way to go and I still have days where I'm scared and anxious and feel like I'm a loser sometimes. And it's getting less and less and less because you develop so much character through the journey. But where do you see yourself? Like, obviously I see you as a hockey stick. Like you say that like, oh, you, sometimes you feel like you're not, but the last like three, four years, it's just gone boom. Like how far do you want to take it? And the flip side of that, is there a point where there's enough or is it not about the finances, as you said before, is it more of just about becoming the best version of Jaden you possibly can? Great question. Um... I'm going to take a moment to think about that. Is there a point where there's enough and you're like, okay, I've done enough. And if maybe there isn't a point where there's enough, is there like an unhealthy side of that that could create these like, because I've, let, I've let, met a lot of men that are damaged by fathers who are not there because they're so busy creating businesses that their dad wasn't around. It kind of fucks them up and they end up, having weird relationships with money and success because they think that's how they, they need to be to be loved. I've met a lot of men like that. A lot of them are very successful, but a lot of them have strange relationships with their fathers because their dads weren't around because that's the example they set. Now they lived a great life. Don't get me wrong. They had a great comfortable life, but is it a great life to maybe have an absent father who's this entrepreneur working 80 to hundred hours a week that you can't even throw a ball with or sit down and be like, Hey dad, can you and I hang out? Can we go for a walk together? Can we go in the park? Like, is there a point where there's like enough when you can maybe take your foot off and be like, okay, hey, I want to spend my time with my kids and my mom as they get older or my dad. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it can become unhealthy? Yeah. So um, as you were saying that, I was thinking um, right now, the current Jaden everything's always subject to change. There's no constant. There's no absolute. Um, right now, the current Jaden would say he's insatiable. Um, there probably will not be a cap or a certain point um, when it comes to making more or doing more. Um, and part of that insatiableness is probably because my goals are way too big. Um, I can't remember which book I got it from, um, but it's referenced through a lot of books. It's called uh, Your Bags. So your big, hairy, audacious goals. Um, and my bag, my big, audacious, hairy goal um, is there, right? Not because I need the money, not because I want uh, to make that much money, but it's just something I want to hit as a personal, um, you know, as a personal goal to say that I was able to reach 10 figures, I was able to become the billionaire status just for my own, you know, ego to stroke um, and said <laughs> I did it to let to let myself know I'm worthy to join these top 0.00001% in the world. Um, and that conquest will keep me going. Um, and uh, it, it's kind of like that saying, like, I fully believe in this. And it's kind of like training your mind to really look at how money is. And before, you know, I'm not sure much how much longer we're going to speak into this, but I'll actually love to give your audience some actionable steps to be able to kind of wire their, uh, you know, wire their mind to be able to kind of adopt money more of a positive uh, light. But before I do so, um, you know, the reason why I want to become a billionaire and kind of it, it gives me that, you know, the next level to jump when when you've kind of accomplished everything already it makes you bored and complacent so it's kind of like a 21 year old become a millionaire and did he everything already he bought that car um you know she bought that home she bought that bag he bought that watch uh, he traveled all over the world at 21 what do you live for when you're 30 what do you live for when you're 40 
sure, maybe you got a family, but you've done everything. And let's just say you go on the same trip with your kids and your wife. Are you going to be that much happier? Probably not because things are not going to feel the same. It'll taste like chicken. So when you accomplish things, things way too fast or you don't have a big, hairy, audacious goal, it's not going to want to make you work harder. So I can't be complacent today, but I'm not. Because even though as much as I'm worth and I can feed a whole entire country if, if I donated everything I have, um, I still keep going. I wake up. I work with these students I work with. I, I look at the stock market when I can. I still invest into crypto. I still buy properties when they're cheap and not you know um, high above market price. I still do all those things because I want to reach that milestone and go like, Jaden, you did it. And when I reach that, you know, when I'm 40 or 50, awesome. When I reach that, at that point, I'll be satisfied with life. Um, so it's kind of looking that light is like, if you have a really big hairy goal, you keep going no matter how much money you make. But when people set their goals too low and they hit that milestone, they become complacent. It's kind of like why a lot of celebrities, especially sports stars, nothing against that. And, you know, whoever it is, not to take any shots, but, you know, certain celebrities um, in the sports or entertainment industry, they make a lot of money. Then they go broke after it happens all the time. Yeah, and that's because they don't have a goal. They're just playing ball and then just making money. They're just singing because they love singing, but no one ever educated them or they never got really inspired to do more with their life. Um, and that's why they lose all their money. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for me, I want to become a billionaire and however long that takes, it keeps me going. And that's why I wake up and do what I do. What I do. Mm, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I would like to give some actionable steps for, you know, uh, you listening today, whether you're John, Mary, Bob, Tracy, or, um, uh, Ashley, if you're listening today, um, you know, write this down, pull out the notebook, um, or if you have your laptop in front of you, you're listening, or if you're driving or something, as you love listening to podcasts, as you're driving, um, I would actually recommend at this point, if you're able to do so, pull it over to the side, um, open up your phone, um, and whip up the notes in your phone section and write down these three simple actionable steps. These are the same steps that I have that's really got me to be where I am today. And trust me, Aaron knows, um, and I'll share today, I lived out of my car. I had nothing. I bounced from sofa to sofa. I thought I was better off just you know, being thrown into a ditch. Um, never thought I'll make this far. Grew up in a very bad neighborhood. So when it comes to literally impossible for me to be here today, it is very impossible. But it Sometimes things are not impossible if you actually will want to believe it. Um, so wherever you are right now in your current financial situation, if there's a gap between where you want to be, please take on these three steps. Okay, the first step is you got to have a purpose. Okay, so as common as it said, as uh, commonly known, um, and anything we do, we need to have a purpose. But with money specifically, you need to have a purpose what you're going to do with this money. If your purpose is shallow or just completely materialistic, you won't get as far. So, for example, going back to what I was saying earlier, if you're a 21-year-old, you come a million, you bought that car, and you travel all around the world, you bought that watch, you bought that bag, you got nothing to live for, man. Right? You got nothing to live for. So you need to be able to have what I call a, a selfless purpose. So have a selfless purpose. And that means contributing back to someone or something other than yourself or your own personal goals. Um, and I'll give you an example for myself. I want to be able to build a charity, donate half my net worth when I become a billionaire to be able to provide educational systems in um, you know, countries that are not able to have the Harvards, the Stanfords, or the Yale. And, my, and that is driven because I'll, I want to be able to find the next Elon Musk, the next Bill Gates, the next Oprah Winfrey, the next whoever. Uh, but they don't have the opportunity to do so because of finances and the economic, uh, you know, uh, setbacks that they are living in that current country. So a purpose that's selfless. So you need to be able to kind of identify that. Step two, right? Um, not living in other people's shadows and not having to be subject to other people's opinion and permission. The last thing that you need to do, and you can literally start tonight, this morning, this evening, whatever time you're listening to this podcast, um, is you need self-affirmation daily. So self-affirmation is really important. What I mean by that, and I still do it to this day with how much I'm worth today, um, is in the morning, I look in the mirror and I'm like, Jaden, today you're going to do something that's going to make you more money. Right? One thing, 
Today, you're going to do something that's going to make you more money. And then at night before I sleep, I say almost the exact same thing. But what I say specifically is, Jaden, today you did something to make more money and you'll do it again tomorrow. Yeah. I say that over, over and over every single day because it's accountable for myself. And um, I only say it if it's actually true. And when you actually take notice and put in affirmations the way I put it in, it allows you to really realize that you are capable of so much more. But what's been holding you back is not your finances, not your education, not, not the people around you. Um, those are all just small, you know, um, small little factors. But the biggest factor is you. If you cannot convince yourself or believe in yourself that you're worth more and you don't remind yourself that you're worth more, then you're going to cave into what we call the path of least resistance is it's better to just believe what everyone else is telling you. Hmm. All right. So you do those three things. And just to repeat there, if you didn't catch that, the first thing is make sure you have a selfless purpose. What are you doing? What are you making money for? That's not just for yourself or your own selfish goals. Two is stop being subjected to other people's opinions and being in the shadow of other people's permission before you, you know, do something or make an opinion of your own. And the last thing that um, is, you know, affirmations, positive affirmations every single day. Um, and here's a funny little sales joke that, you know, I want to kind of share as well. Uh, something I share with my team is um, PMA equals OPM. Positive mental attitude equals other people's money. Mm. Uh, meaning the more positive you are, the more happy people are willing to give you money. And um, why I'm bringing that up is because if you want to be able to make more money, you have to be positive about yourself and money, and then you'll be able to get there. And then, you know, you can understand that want to give you money. Um, so that's something I want to share, but uh, yeah, yeah I'm hopefully speak to that too. picked up on very that. true. I'm, I'm in phone sales, right? I, I talk to most people on the phone. I never meet any of them. The first five seconds of that phone call is extremely important. If I go, hi, uh, is this Jaden? It's done. It's literally done. It's over. How I, we, we could even maybe do it. We, we could even maybe do a sales thing right live on a podcast right now. This is how I answer. This is how I, this is how I do the phone. This is my opening thing. And there's a reason to it. And I'll explain it. Hello, Jaden. He got cut off. Speaking. There. Speaking. Hi, Jaden. This is AJ calling from trying to sell you something, whatever, wherever I'm calling from is now a bad time to chat. The reason why I say, is it a bad time? Is I got it from a book. The book that I got it from is by Chris Voss. It's called Never Split the Difference. And he said, a lot of salespeople try to get people to say yes. Oh, hey, Jaden, you want to save money, don't you? Uh, yes. You want a really good quality car, don't you? Yes. Like they, a lot of salespeople like corner people with yes questions. And he tells people that you should get people to say no as quickly as possible because psychologically it makes people feel like they're in control. So if you can be like, hey, is, is now a bad time? And they say, no, no, it's not a bad time. No, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good time. They've now confirmed that you can go on with this conversation. It's a very interesting thing that I've used all the time and it uses, works really, really well rather than being like, is now a good time? No. No, it's not a good time. Most people are going to be like, yes. I, I, if somebody says, is now a good time to chat? I'm never really like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a good time. I've never said that. It's usually like, no, no, I don't want to do it. So it's a reason why there's certain things you can learn from books. So what's my point? All the stuff that Jaden has been talking about, that I can talk about, about sales, about trying to make money, you educate yourself. Read these books he was talking about. Write down those notes. I wrote down those notes he was talking about. I don't do some of that stuff. I used to do some of that stuff, then it falls off because life happens. I, I have uh, not been doing affirmations for a very long time. I think it's a reason why I kind of felt like I've slipped mentally a little bit. Because the most important conversation that you have is the conversation you have with yourself. 
And if most of you spoke to your friends and family the same way you speak to yourself, you wouldn't have any friends. <laughs> that is very true. They're like you're an asshole. I'm not going to be friends with you. And yet most of us speak to ourselves like that. And I know that I've seen, I've seen Jaden speak to himself like that, that time in Starbucks. I've seen him do it to himself only once. <laughs> Only one time. The rest of the time, it's the complete opposite. But give us some closing thoughts, some closing remarks on anything you want to share, man, just from your heart. Formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. Said by one of the best entrepreneurs of our time, Jim Rohn. And how you should interpret that is there's no amount of book learning, formal education learning, professor learning, or whatever that will be able to get you to probably a state that you want to be in. And that state can be financially free as in terms of buying multiple properties, not just that home that you're going to pay mortgage and live in for the next 20 years. Um, maybe it's being able to travel on a whim. Um, I do that sometimes too. My Hawaii trip was on a whim. I just wanted to go Hawaii. I'm just like, let's go. I don't care how much it's going to cost, blah, 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 with my partner, but let's just go. Um, taking multiple trips, uh, being able to passively invest, making money while you sleep, whatever those financial goals are for you. Um, there's nothing wrong with, you know, getting a formal education. Um, and I support that 100% um, because we need formally educated people uh, to be able to perform uh, certain roles, right? Like you want a formally educated doctor to do its job because it <laughs> makes sense. Like you don't want a doctor to learn that on YouTube, right? It's not like <laughs> playing one of those freaking, uh, you know, baby games or something where it's like you're trying to pick in the, um, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about, um, that little yeah, game. going with a broken leg. Be like, yeah, hey, man, you, are you a doctor? Yeah, but I've been, I've been watching so many YouTube videos. I've read so many books. I've been to so many seminars, bro. I don't have the certificate, but I, I know. I yeah. trust me. Yeah, so, you know, there's certain, like, there's certain the industries that you're going to need it for sure. And then there's industries that you don't need it. Um, but what I would say uh, from where I'm going with this and to wrap it up is further enhancing yourself and further self-educating yourself on top of your formal education, if you have it, is more important. And the best way to look at it is, let's just say you do want to be a doctor, but and you do have a practice, but you want, you know, you want more passive income so you can spend more time with your family because being a surgeon does require a lot of your time. Um, spending two to three hours um, a day learning about, you know, different uh, passive income assets, whether it's equities, whether it's crypto, whether it's NFT, whether whatever your flavor of the month is, um, just learning it on the side, as opposed to just depending on one source of income makes all the difference. Um, so further enhancing your own education on your own time um, is more important than ever. And that's how you build a fortune, not a living. That's Thanks, what I'll end off in. I appreciate your time. And if you want to hear more from Jaden, you can go on social media and just type in Jaden Vu. He's on there. He's been featured on Forbes. He's got a really good YouTube channel. He's got a really good Instagram. He's got over 150,000 followers on Instagram. You can just follow him anyway. You just type in Jaden Vu into Google and you'll find him on multiple different platforms. He's also got a podcast specifically towards drop shipping, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. And hopefully I get to Lexi and I will maybe come and see you in Toronto, maybe in the next couple of months, maybe during summertime. It's not that far away. Why not? We can, you can show us some of the good food places, but thank you for your time, man. Uh, thank you. And I uh, hopefully I provided some value that someone can take away today. Oh, you 100% did. Thanks, brother. Chat to you soon.